Welcome back, guys. As you can see, Mighty Mouse is in the Hillbilly Garage here once again. No, we're not turboing it yet. As I said in a previous video, it took the parts for the turbo and everything to get here. Such a long time to get here. We're only about three weeks away from the P5 Jive. So I don't want to tear in, start doing this turbo and not have it done and not have a 500 ready to ride during that event because that kind of be against the point of having a Pioneer 500 exclusive event and not having my Pioneer 500 to ride. You guys would probably miss not having Mighty Mouse, especially as I ran circles around everyone in the X4. <gasps> anyway, something we can do in the meantime, as I said, also said in a previous video, I've got the Dino Jet Power Commander here. This is what I'm going to use once the turbo is installed to control my fueling. Now this alone will not do it. I also have here, this is the Dino Jet Auto Tuner. And it will work in conjunction with the Power Commander 5 to automatically adjust the fuel ratios and stuff when I have the turbo on there. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to go ahead and do an install video of this Power Commander because it will already be in there. We'll be ready to go when we do install the turbo. And if you guys are wanting to turbo it, just wanting to know if this is worth it to get this alone to give you a little bump in performance, well, we can figure that out as well. But as I work on getting this down to where you can get the connectors, I did happen to get some 0 to 30 times up on the hill with Mighty Mouse. I had enough room, not like the last time I tried. I uh, kind of hate to say this, but we didn't get up to 30 miles an hour on that run. So as I go ahead and tear down to get to what I need to get at, we'll go ahead and cut to the 0 to 30 times I did with Mighty Mouse on these big old 32s with the EPI Economy Clutch Springs installed. Alright, so I'm out here to my makeshift drag racing spot. Probably not the perfect. It's really not too level. It's awful bumpy, but... We'll eventually get a piece of equipment up here to level this off so we have a designated place for drag racing and doing our time launches. We're going to go ahead and see if we can't get a 0 to 30 in Mighty Mouse. Might not be enough room, but uh, we'll see. So to be safe, I have the draggy set for 0 to 10, 0 to 25, and a 0 to 30. We should be able to get some times between those to see what the performance is before we hook up the Power Commander. And then we'll try it again after we put the Power Commander to see what that alone does for our performance. So, let's see if we can get some times. Oh, we're going to be official go full harnesses as we unleash the power of this magnificent off-road performance vehicle. <laughs> well, not until I turbo it at least. Did he make it to 30? Yes, he did. You I think, think he did? He made it to 29. 29? Okay. That's a fast one. We'll see. <laughs> I think I'll try a second gear launch next time. Oh, I did get to 30. Oh, boy. Zero to 30, I guess my speedometer would be off because of the 32. Zero to 30, 10.5 seconds. Oh, zero to 10 was 1.4. Zero to 25, 7.2. And zero to 30, 10.51. We'll go back and try that again. That was only a two wheel drive too, but I don't really think I need to use four wheel drive big old tires there isn't any wheel spin I'm not having any wheel spin as I keep the line all right so here we go attempt number two I'm gonna start in second this time still gonna stay in two-wheel drive I think we shall 
go ahead and torque brake a little bit here. Here we go. And a 0 to 30 in 9.9 .9 seconds. We got under 10 seconds, 0 to 30. Woo! That'd be my minivan, right? <laughs> Probably not. Well, those were all verified times, too. Sweet. Maybe we'll try short shifting through first, real quick, to get off the gun better. Because it does bog down a little bit trying to start in second. low just for an instant. Three, two, one. and load just for a second and then quickly shifting into second best for taking off let's go ahead and head back we'll put in the power commander now of course the power commander comes with the power commander itself with all the connectors you need now most of these are a simple you unplug a factory one it gets plugged in here then this one gets plugged into where the other factory is so it's pretty simple to install it does come with a posi tap connector here for this green wire, which I believe gets connected to the throttle position sensor. It has an O2 delete plug, which is super simple. This just unplugs the O2 delete, which is dark, which is right here. You're going to unplug that, plug this in because you won't need that. However, we will be tapping into that when it comes time to run the auto tune, but we'll get to that at a later date when we turbo it. Uh, and it comes with little rubber connectors to put into your accessory ports here on the power commander Which you can see right there, which we won't need those yet at this time comes with velcro to attach this with a Alcohol pad for cleaning and USB port for updating Now like I said the dyno jet comes pre-installed with a fuel mat for a stock pioneer 500 Which ours basically is it's gonna work fine enough for now. So we hook up the auto tune and then we'll be able to have everything adjust on the fly for the mods we're doing. And of course it comes with some instructions here with some nice, they're not color pictures, but they're pretty detailed, so it's pretty easy to follow. So I'm basically going to run you guys through this. There is one change I've already made. The instructions tell you to put the dyno jet and mount it here in the battery box. But as you can see by the condition of my battery box, and you guys know from my videos, the mud I get in, I'm not exactly sure how waterproof that is. So I went ahead and picked up one of these little watertight boxes. I got this at Walmart for like five bucks. Uh, you don't got a lot of wire there for mounting, but we're gonna hook this up, see where we can go. And we're gonna mount it in this guy and attach this guy somewhere. Even if we have to go like here on the back of one of the seats. Of course, we'll have to drill a hole to run our wire through, which will make it not waterproof, but we'll make sure to seal up with some ultra black or something. So that we have a good watertight seal that we'll still be able to open and then get in there to make any adjustments or to add anything like the auto tune. So I didn't pull my seats out, but I think I'm going to go ahead and pull them out too, just so I have room. If we can get away with mounting it, that little box in under here somewhere where we don't have to remove it every time we take the seats on and off, that would be great. So let me go ahead and take the seats out and then we will start installing the power commander. Well, I already think I found the perfect place to mount my little watertight box. There's enough room right under the seat here on a passenger side where a PCM is that's low enough. It's not going to interfere with our seat or anything. And that'll be a good place to keep it. I will have to cut this little lip off right here so I can work the latch. That's no big deal. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that and we'll install the power commander. 
All right, a little change of plans here. I got to thinking if I mounted that up here, when I had to change the oil and take this out, that really wasn't gonna work. I was gonna have to unhook the power commander each and every time. So what I ended up doing is moving it back here. I mounted my waterproof box back here in this pillar. The air box I already checked can go in. Now I will not be able to really open this too well with the air box in place. However, that air box is going bye bye once we turbo this guy anyway. I'm doing something completely different with a whole new air box and we'll be ditching that into the scrap pile so that's not going to matter. We got our velcro in place so it won't bounce around in there and we'll still have plenty of room for our auto tune. So I'm going to go ahead and shut that up. So that's in place now. We got all our wires here. The first thing we're going to do is take, I believe, these two. We're going to, or maybe it's these two. Well, let's see. Well, it goes right here to our fuel injector. We are going to put a little dialect grease on that guy. And then our one connector from our wiring harness will get plugged once I get turned the right way into that. And then this end of the power commander gets plugged into our fuel injector. First connection is done. Now the next one is a little bit harder to see. It's actually a crank position sensor. Here's our battery box or fuses. This is our park and brake cable. And it's nestled right in here. I can get a little better light here for you. That is it. Right there. We're going to unplug that and do the same thing. So I'm going to see if I can weasel my hand in here. Get enough to get this plug unplugged. This is kind of a tricky one. Because there's a bunch of stuff in the way. And it is just fastened with a little push holder. I don't know if I can get it loose or not. I should be able to pop that out. One thing to note too, so you don't get this confused. The fuel injector is black. Like the black factory harness to the fuel injector. Down here, you guys can't see. And these are gray. Just like a crank position sensor is gray. So as long as you match up your colors... You should be good. It didn't say that in the uh, instructions, but that's how it is. There we go. Now I got this up. I got this free. I should be able to get it unplugged. Eek, baby. Go on. Go on. There we go. Glad that was dialect grease because it was full of dirt and mud. So we are going to do the same thing. Little dialect grease on that. It'll get plugged into the factory. Now, this is going to be the tricky one, especially getting dialect grease on because the connector is down there and there. Ooh, liner up. Haha, -ha, there we go. I'm going to push this back down. See if I can't get that back in the hole. All right, so the next little hookup we gotta do gets a little complicated because we gotta tap into a wire. We're not simply unplugging and plugging a new one in. The power commander comes with this little posi tap connector, which what you gotta do is splice it to the blue and black wire here on your throttle position sensor. It's on the, the left side, the driver's side of your throttle body. So we're going to unplug that. We'll have to pull back a little bit of this wire sheeting. And you can see right there, there's a white and then a blue and a black. And that's the one it's going to get connected to. But here is our blue and black wire. We're going to want to separate that. I did cut a little bit of the tape back. So this guy is simply going to go like this over that wire. This is going to get screwed on good and tight. You may need pliers, you may not, I don't know, let's find out. Nope. And then this end's going to come off. Our wire that runs to that is already right here and cut. So we just need to stick that through. Mm 
and push her down in. And that is on there. Good and tight, actually, surprisingly. I was a little worried. I am going to go ahead and wrap this in electrical tape, though, to make sure it is good and dry. And then we'll dial it, grease this again, and plug it back in. All right, the next step is we got to take these wires here and run them in line of our ignition coil, which is behind the driver's seat. You can see my snorkel here. Here's the wheel. It's nestled up in here. So, let's see. We're going to have to run these through here. We should have plenty of wire. I'm going to plug these guys. Sorry, everyone, you can pretty much just see my hand. All right, so there's that. I think we've got... Oh, where'd my little guy go? He's stuck in there, isn't he? Come on out! Okay. So, how this one works here is... The green wire here, according to the instructions, the Power Commander green wire goes to the stock green and yellow, which is this guy. So we'll get that. Try to get that plugged in. Like I said, this connector is going to be a bit of a pain. Let's pull that back. We'll get this plugged in. Like I said, I still got plenty of dialect grease in there, so we're not going to slop her up anymore. Now, is that going to go over very easily? Let's see if we can't get that inside there. There we go. Oh, beautiful. Clear in. So there's that. Now the white and red of the Power Commander hooks to the black stock wire. Let's see if we can't get that inside there like we did the other one now i gotta get these guys over and plugged in to our ignition coil like so as i lose my light and you guys are blinded wow this is tricky i can get her i gotta get her Okay, and like that, that chore is done. <sighs> all right, once our coil wires are all hooked up here, the last thing we have to do is unplug our O2 sensor right here, which is, again, there's the driver's seat. It's right behind it, kind of on this frame post right here. And all it gets plugged in its place is just this little jumper. This O2 delete, which pretty much just bypasses it, turns it into a closed loop, so it tricks the computer, which we don't need that computer to read it anyway because we're running the power commander. We got our dialect grease and our plug, and guys, this is all the more dialect grease you need. You don't need to completely fill the female ends, ends full of this stuff. Just a little bit on the male end is all you need to get a good proper seal and waterproof seal with dialect grease. Now we're just going to take this plugger in the bottom. And that's it. I'm just going to tuck this away for now. Eventually, that's going to be coming out when we turbo it and use the auto-tune. If you're not going to use an auto-tune or anything, if this is all you're doing is hook up a power commander, you can actually take the O2 sensor clear out, which is on your exhaust right here, although you will have to plug it with a plug. And then the final connection we have to do, where'd it go? Is take this grounding wire, and it's going to run down its run this a little better and come here come here you all 
it's gonna run down in here and get put on the ground wire for a battery right there easy enough and there she is all hooked up in there you can see her let's get you in closer ah, there she is so now all that's left to do is we're gonna go ahead and throw our air box back on so we're not sucking in unfiltered air and we'll give her a test start all right air box is back on as you see i didn't have a problem getting it back on with my little commander box in the way and like I said, as far as getting into there, that won't matter when she's turboed because this is not going to be on here. I can't really open it right now with all that. But I'm going to have my airbox relocated and I'm going with a different one I have over here on the shelf anyway. So we got it all hooked up except for the resonator box. Let's go ahead and hit the ignition. See if she starts. There should be a little indicator light. I doubt you guys will be able to see that in. Oh no, you can see it saying we got power. She started right up a couple cranks. It's dark out there anyway. So I'll go ahead and get my rack back on, get things kind of buttoned up here. And the next time we see ya, we should be going for a quick little test ride. We'll warm her up a little bit, make sure everything's working okay and see if we can't grab another zero to 30 time with the power commander hooked up.